All right, so this is gonna be me throwing a bottle or jug shape with a narrow neck. So I slam it down first and then I'm getting it wet. I'm sealing with my pinky right down here. And at the same time, I'm gonna start bringing it together to cone the clay. So I'm gonna cone it three times. And that, I know most of the time, will get, get everything as homogenous as I need it to be based on how much I've wedged my clay. If you wedge your clay a little more, you have to cone it less. Um, and if you wedge your clay less, then you usually have to cone it more. And one more time here. And so when I go this last time, I'll be centering the piece of clay. So for me to do that, I'm gonna rest my right hand on the outside. Notice how it's resting on the splash pan right here by the bottom left corner of your screen. And I'm gonna be pushing down with my left hand. So my right hand is catching the clay as it comes down. My left hand is continuing to push it into the center of the wheel head. My right arm I'm making sure is nice and firm to catch the clay as I push it down. So right now, you'll notice my hands are touching like this. I'm pushing down with my left hand and in with my right hand. If it starts to get sticky, add some water. You wanna make sure that while you're centering, everything is nice and wet and lubricated. So now I'm gonna go ahead, wipe some of the slurry off my hands and I'm gonna start opening up the clay. So I'm using a thumb and my pointer finger. You can also use two thumbs. All you're doing is pushing straight down into the center, slow and steady, slow and steady, until you think you've opened it up enough. If you're not sure if you've opened it up enough, you can take a needle tool, stick it into the center, and then with your pointer finger, you'll go down to where the clay body touches. And the space that you have left at the top, right there, is how thick your bottom is. So this is 3 eighths to a half of an inch, which is just a little too thick. So when I pull towards me with my middle finger in my right hand, I'm just pushing down a smidge with, with that as I pull this back to open it up and I'm going to open it just a smidge farther than I think I need to. All right, and that'll be important for the next step. So now I'm going to take a rib. I want to make sure and compress my bottom. You can use your fingers to do that. Working your way towards the middle. I'm choosing to use a rib that's got a flat edge and a nice 90 degree angle. I'm just pushing down a little bit to flatten that out and firm up the clay. Sorry about the, dog, duh, the barking dogs in the background. Now, my first pull, you can certainly do the traditional knuckle or finger method to pull it up. What I like to do is you're going to grab the clay. I'm using these two fingers and this finger. So my middle finger and thumb go on the outside. My pointer fingers go on the inside and I'm pushing in and as I push in, I'm pinching the clay between here and this part of my hand. If it gets too sticky, you can add some water to it. And I'm moving in towards the center. Once there's not enough room, I'm gonna let go with my left hand, set it on the outside, and finish pinching with my right hand. I'm rotating it just so you can see what I'm doing and then I'll come through, I'll make sure my rim is compressed. So that's my first pull. That gets my clay in a nice cone shape that's nice and strong and sturdy. It's a nice pyramid or volcano. Now I'm gonna start pulling up a lot more similar to how you probably learned or the normal way to pull it up. So I'm putting fingers on the outside, very bottom corner, pushing in. You'll notice I'm creating a lip right here, and that is what I'm gonna be lifting up to the top. On the inside, I'm making a little hook with my finger, and that is riding just above the, this ledge on the bottom. 
You can use a pointer finger or you can use your knuckle. Here I'm using my knuckle. And I'm riding that up and I'm slowly starting to straighten that out. Once I get up to the top, okay, you'll notice it flares out a little bit right at the top. So I'm gonna use that same finger position like this that I started with. And I'm just pinching the clay on the inside and the outside, rolling it in. And I'm letting the rim go through this flap of skin right here. So this is allowing me, and then I'm just kind of grabbing the clay a little bit with my left hand. And that's allowing me to compress all of the clay right up in here, all at the same time. Okay, I'm gonna try pulling this up again. So again, I'm grabbing my fingers down at the bottom, I'm pushing in, I'm creating a nice little ledge right there for me to lift up to create height. All right, so I'm gonna start lifting this up. And I'm using the word lift instead of squeeze or pinch because I'm lifting the clay up and pushing it skinnier and into place. Once I get close to the top, you'll see there's kind of a big overhang. And once I can reach my fingers around, I'm gonna do this same move. I'm grabbing the clay like this on the outside and like this on the other side and I'm slowly lifting it up. I'm letting the top rim of the clay pass through my finger skin here to compress. And you'll notice I've got a nice tall this is probably close to seven or eight inches. And this was uh, three pounds of clay to start with. I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna pull one more time, and this will be my final height pull. I got, my clay got just a little thin down there. And I think we're about where I want to be. All right, so now I'm going to start shaping this. I'm just going over the spot that got a little twisted on me right down at the bottom. I'm actually throwing down from the top, pushing down to help firm up some of that clay. That was just a little thin there. So this is going to be, like I said, a skinny necked vase. So I'm going to take a rib on the outside. This is a metal rib that I've cut part of this off. And I'm going to be supporting the outside with that. And the inside, I'm using my finger like this, like my finger were a rib. And this is going over, it's compressing the clay and starting to form it into the shape I want. Okay. Next, I'm going to collar in the top a bit. Before I do that, I have some water in the very bottom of my pot that I'm gonna get out of there. So I'm collaring in the top and I'm making this shape with my fingers and I'm just slowly pushing in. As I push in, I'm increasing the speed of my wheel because that's going to provide pressure pushing outwards. All right. And this is not quite as narrow as it's going to end up, but close enough. So now to get this to have a little bit better shape to it, I'm going to get a little bit of this extra clay that was on the bottom from when I threw off. And I will probably come back and do that one more time right at the end, just to help the final profile. So I've got a throwing stick. That throwing stick's gonna go on the inside. And one tip is if you're not sure where it is on the inside, you can actually tap it against and you can see the little bump right there where it's hitting. So that's how I know exactly where my throwing stick is. I'm gonna use that same metal rib on the outside to support. All 
right. Clean that off. You'll notice I was holding my metal rivet at about a 45 degree angle, okay? I'm gonna clean some of this extra goop off the outside here quick. All right, and this time I'm gonna make a pass without the rib. I'm right-handed, so it's a little more comfortable sometimes for me to hold the throwing stick with my right hand. I'm supporting the rim of the piece with my right couple fingers, and I'm slowly stretching the belly out from the bottom towards the top, just from the inside. All right, and I'm gonna do that one more time. I've got the bottom about where I want it. I'm gonna start about a third of the way up. It's that middle section that's a little narrower. When I do this, I always think about where my curve is ending towards the top, and I aim for it. You go, okay, I know where I'm at on the bottom, I know where I need to be on the top, and I keep thinking about where I need to end up at the top. Whenever I do this, I'm thinking, okay, where am I aiming for at the top? Okay, now I'm starting to lighten up the pressure and come back in. All right. So now my vase has a lot of volume right in here, which looks nice. I'm gonna go back with this metal rib and clean up the outside a little bit. Again, you'll notice I'm supporting the neck I like these metal ribs because they're very flexible. So that's how I'm working on the shape here. Okay. Next, I'm going to finish collaring in that top of the neck. All right, so I'm grabbing it with both hands and I'm starting to move it in and constrict. I'm supporting the inside with my pointer fingers. Now, if it starts to collapse right in here, which often happens, I'm bringing up clay from just a little bit below. I'm starting to move it up into that spot that was collapsing through the spot that was collapsing. And now I'm gonna increase the speed. I'm gonna bring this in a little more. Okay, that's about the thickness that I want. I'm gonna run my finger over this again. Now, before I finish this off, I wanna go through, I'm gonna throw this little bit again from the inside. I'm gonna go over with my rib to smooth this out. Okay. Now the very top here. Okay, now I've got a little bit of an uneven rim, which happens a lot of the times when you collar in. I'm gonna cut off part of it, just a smidge. Get rid of that. And I'm laying my finger, I'm bending it from the inside. This is just to give myself a nice, meaty, thick, strong looking rim. And slowly I'm rolling it out. There we go. Just like that. And I'm gonna use my pinky, it'll fit right up in here. Okay. We'll go through here again. I'm gonna go all the way down actually. and roll this over. Just like that, which gives me a nice fat rim. I'm gonna take a sponge I'm draping that sponge across the top and I'm actually 
throwing it just a smidge. I'm supporting the bottom of where I rolled this lip over, making sure I've got a nice good seal down here. It's all connected. I've got some extra slurry there, cleaning that off. There's some drippies. Now the final last little bit, if you look right down here, you'll see that this curves nicely and then it comes straight down into the wheel head. I want it to continue in. So I'm just gonna carve a little bit away. On the bottom. Yeah, it's a pretty normal thing to do with this sort of shape. Okay, trim a little bit of an undercut under there for when I wheel it off or cut it off. I'm gonna dry my hands. Now the outside of this I can run over with a rib. One more time if I don't think that it's dry. I did run a rib over this so the outside of it's pretty dry. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to wire it off just once. And then when I go to lift it up, I'm going to twist slightly as I lift and then set it off to the side and I'm done. There you have it.